Kalefi North America, an introduction. Hello, my name is Mark Olson, General Manager and CEO of Kalefi based in Milwaukee. Firstly, thank you for your interest in Kalefi as well as our products. We appreciate it. Over the next 50 minutes, I'll take 20 of them to explain who we are, what we do, and how we do it. Then I'll take the remaining 30 minutes to review some of our more innovative products according to system designers. So let's start. Who is Kalefi? Well, we're manufacturers of innovative flow control products specifically for the hydronics and plumbing markets. That's our sole focus and our area of expertise. And where did it all begin? Right here with this man, Mr. Francesco Calefi. Back in 1961, out of his home based out of Milan, Italy, he began building control valves. Shortly thereafter, he went to business selling under his namesake brand Calefi to distribution. Fast forward to today, we do business in 70 countries and we have 1,000 employees worldwide. And we are still family owned. Some time ago, Mr. Francesco Calefi passed the reins to his son, Mr. Marco Calefi. And today, Marco serves as Calefi's president and chairman worldwide. Our world headquarters are in Italy, Northwest Italy specifically between the cities of Milan and Turin. Let's take a look at our facilities, starting with the world headquarters. Looking down, we can see, spanning left to right, the Kalefi campus. In the background, rising up from the horizon, we see the Alps in between the countryside of Italy. Our operations can be summarized as follows. We're manufacturers located in Italy almost exclusively, with the exception we do have some suppliers in North America producing for Kalefi for the U.S. markets and Canada under contract or license. Research and engineering is done in Italy with application engineering done at different subsidiaries, including Kalefi North America here in Milwaukee. Key production processes include forging, CNC machining, milling, and injection molding. We are ISO 9002 certified. Looking at our product breadth, this photo depicts it. On the left-hand side, steel fabrication, such as the large air and dirt separator that Bob is standing next to, brass products shown in the middle, polymer products on the right-hand side. Let's take a look at the production of brass products, such as this thermostatic mixing valve, and basically where Kalefi began its business 55 years ago. We produce enough brass products in the course of a year to make two Eiffel Towers, and if you've been to Paris, that's quite a feat you'll appreciate. On the left, you can see a photograph of some of our bar stock and tube stock, the raw materials that begins our process. By the way, our tube stock and bar stock is procured in Brescia within a 100-mile drive. Brescia is world-renowned for the quality of its brass. Going over to our forging facility, by the way, Kalefi produces at three different facilities, all within five miles of one another. This facility at this point in time in this photograph is actually going full tilt, despite the fact looking at those emission stacks in the back, it doesn't appear to be emissions coming out. Italy has very stringent environmental laws, and despite that, Kalefi exceeds them by a factor of five-fold. We strive to be very environmentally conscious in everything that we do. So let's take a look at the process of building brass components. It begins here. We take bar stock, cut it to length, coat it with graphite, a lubrication that has a nice quality that it doesn't melt until 1900 degrees, which is above the operating temperatures of our ovens. Here we see an oven with four blanks exiting, about ready to enter Q into the forging process. Here is pre-stamp or pre-forge, here's post-forge. Our presses range up to 800 tons, which gives us the ability, depending on the geometry of the product, to produce a part approximately 15 pounds or the size of a bowling ball. An example of a product as such that you would see here in North America would be our combination air and dirt separator with a magnetic feature. More on magnetism later in this presentation. Smaller Forgings coming out of the press, as shown here, compression fittings. These would not go into a trimming operation like the vast majority of our forgings, but right into machining, where perhaps might you see something like this in North America, right on our geothermal manifold ball valves and balancing valves. Most of our parts go into an automatic trimming operation. As mentioned, some are done manually, especially lower volume, as being done by this gentleman here. It looks like he has been doing this sometime, judging from his forearms. After forging, the parts are allowed to cool down before proceeding to the next stage. Here we see bends of air vent caps cooling, after which they will be machined and prepared for assembly into this device, an automatic hydronic air vent. 
If Calefi isn't the largest manufacturer of automatic air vents in the world, we are certainly close to the top. There is no way of knowing for sure. Now, if these bins contained plumbing products, Calefi would use a desincification resistant type of brass, in which case, after cooling down, the parts would be reheated again for up to five hours to put in place the corrosion protection of a plumbing product. An example of such would be, like you see here, Calefi's line of pressure reducing valves being introduced in 2016. You may have made note that we have a thousand employees and that could be surprising to you knowing our scale. Well, we take full advantage of automation indicated as an example by the robot shown here. This robot is doing pressure decay testing of a manifold section and then afterwards taking the piece and setting it on the conveyor in the back to be staged for the next process. Now, over here in North America, this is one of the items that would be used to build this guy right here, a radiant distribution manifold assembly. More robots, in this case, an automatic air vent shown in the top right, the robot's doing some testing and then putting the pieces in a egg shell or egg crate type of packaging arrangement. Now, speaking of plastic, we'll move over to our facility that houses our injection molding as well as a number of our automated assembly stations shown here. The red outline shows the expansion that the building has undergone since this photograph was taken. We need to send another drone up. Let's take a look on the inside at plastic injection molding to start with. Here we see a view of the different presses up to 200 ton clamping capacity, be top right zone valves and dirt separators, for example. Before I leave this slide, you see coming down from the ceiling feeder lines, these basically feed the resin that is tightly controlled in another part of the building for humidity and temperature. And then when the presses require more resin, they get vacuum transferred by those lines into the presses. Another part of the building shows our assembly stations. In view here are approximately eight stations. You don't see too many people here. If you look closely, you'll see a couple. Their role is to replenish the hoppers as well as conduct some random quality checks, despite the fact that Calefi 100% tests and inspects to conformance all products going out the door. More assembly stations. Another assembly station. This feeder on the right is an example of the feeders I was referring to a couple slides ago. If you look into one of these Feeders, you can get an example of Calefi's attention to detail. On the left, these little cap, approximately 3 sixteenths of an inch in diameter, are machined, fed into this feeder bowl. They get vibration fed into an assembly process that produces this part with the stem pressed in place, the grommet put on, and the screw fastened. These, in turn, will be vibration fed into another process. An example of something that's more maybe familiar to you here in North America, thermostatic radiator valve heads being produced here as shown in my office in Milwaukee. Moving on to the working of metal, high volume screw machines and CNC stations are shown in this photograph. The high volume screw machines in the back, the CNC stations here in the front. Taking a look at a machining center, you might see something like this. In this case, an articulating robotic head doing various machining maneuvers on a brass piece, lubrication splashing up on the top right guard, and brass shavings falling to the bottom, getting ready for conditioning for recycling. Looking at a design procedure here, a product, this technician is taking a measurement of a blank, a wax blank that ultimately will be used to produce a brass die making a fixed orifice type balancing valve as shown here. We are quite integrated vertically and horizontally. We like to control the design and production of our automation equipment, including the tools and molds. Somewhat of a guarded area, not too many visitors come in here, but if you went in, you'd see something like this. Tools being fabricated or maintained, such as the mold that you see on the right. Another bird's eye view of our main facility in the back, you see that large building. It's about 110 feet high over a football field or soccer field long. It is an investment as Cleppy has made to streamline the picking, packing, and warehousing process as Cleppy has grown its business globally over the years. Rather than extend outward our facility horizontally in a very expensive piece of the world, we took advantage of what technology can do for us with vertical warehouses and went up. So let's take a look at the inside of that to get an appreciation for what this does for Calefi's business. We stripped away the wall. This is what you see when products either work in process or finished goods need to get stored. They follow the red path, completely un a unmanned automated system takes the products, stores them. And then when there's a internal production order or a customer order following the yellow path, the 
software continually looks for patterns and learns to minimize the amount of time any part travels. So it allows us to be very responsive and leaving that warehouse going over to the pickers are these shuttles that travel at a high rate of speed to the stations where the pickers are located. They can concentrate on the customer rather than going out, running around the warehouse and finding parts to pick and then pack. I mentioned we are ISO 9002, thus we have quite evolved processes. Just a small glimpse. This is a pressure reduced valve top left there that has a liquid penetrant form of, of a quality check to look for any micro cracks that the UV detector on the right could see if there's an issue. Down in the bottom, an example of barcoding, which our processes all follow. Moving over to design, this is Cubo Rosso, or otherwise known in English as the Red Cube, as you might guess. Research, engineering, and test facility. It is a net zero facility. You can see solar technology on the roof. It also employs geothermal technology of different types, not just to heat and cool our facility, but also to use as actual test beds for our components undergoing development. If you look on the inside, design engineers doing work, something to Tells me they got the phone call before the photographer arrived, by the way. <laughs> I don't see any papers. Anyway, nice clean shot. And in the same facility, a number of test stations, such as you see here. As of recent, we have been doing water quality testing for hydronic systems. From that, we have developed in North America a demineralizer, as Bob is showing using here, that allows the contractor to take the water that's available to him at the job site, condition it by way of demineralizing it to produce the grade that is ideal for a hydronic system and increase the longevity of the system and not succumb the system to problems such as scale on heat exchangers, galvanic attack, and the like. Be on the lookout for those type products from Cleffy in 2016. And before we leave, Bob, He's our national training manager. He focuses on training and educating contractors and wholesalers. A recent photograph of him on Mechanical Business Magazine during a promotion they were doing up in Toronto at a trade show. You could go get your shot taken and put on business the, the magazine here, as Bob has done here. So good shot, Bob. We're very proud to have him. We're also very proud to have his counterpart who focuses on the design community for education for Kalefi. His name is Jody Samuel, and he goes around North America. America educating designers. Here he's in front of some consulting engineers during a lunch and learn. If they have an interest in Bob or Jody, they are have bag will travel kind of guys, contact your Kalefi sales rep. Now speaking of engineers and designers, to support your system design efforts, we make available on our website downloadable media and documents specific to our products. Here, for example, you see our HydroCal product line and the various documents available to be downloaded. For example, 2D drawings, 3D drawings, Revit files, submittal sheets, etc., etc. Even visual symbols and helpful videos. Back to Cuboroso, more shots at the different types of equipment that we have in and on the facility. It's not just products that we develop. We try to understand customer interactions with their products. This is our experience training room. People get in here. We see how they interact with our products. It gives us insight into not only product development, but also the instructions and care of the product for our literature needs. We just jumped the ocean and now we're over in North America in Milwaukee. This is our headquarters. Started in 2002. We just started doing business. We're neighbors with the Milwaukee Brewers baseball club next to Miller Stadium, if you are familiar with with baseball. Looking inside of our facility, you see different operations such as this, standard warehousing processes, assembly, application engineering. Bob's doing some electrical conductivity of fluid inside a hydronic system. Over here, Cody's next to a large separator about ready to go out the door. And some more people at our office during a recent St. Patrick's Day celebration. Nice to see all the smiles. Speaking of smiles, a number of our independent reps smiling during a, an event in New York. Seems like a lot of awards that day. So we had a lot of fun, gave out performance awards, and took the opportunity to take a shot at our independent rep. Our sales force and training force works with in managing the U.S. and Canadian marketplaces. We're considered to be a very innovative and technical product line. We have a lot of investments in educational materials. It's our contribution to the hydronics and plumbing industry. Here you see an example of design journals that we 
issue every six months, free of charge. They're hard copy format. They're written by engineers intended for the design and contracting community. And I'll guarantee you, regardless of where you are on the experience spectrum in your career, if you haven't seen these, these will be very helpful in your job. So as an example, over here we see number 18 issued in 2016, water quality in hydronic systems. If you looked on the inside, as we show here, when we peered over the cubicle wall of one of our employees recently, you can see what's on the inside. Photographs, diagrams, how to do things, how to even not do them. They show many brands. They're generic, largely generic in nature. And I think the design community, if you haven't seen them, you'll agree these are very useful. And it was very pleasing for me to see that he wasn't reading Sports Illustrated when we looked in. <laughs> Also, I feel we pioneered in North America webinars, one-hour webinars that Bob hosts, typically either himself or with a guest speaker who's expert on a particular topic. At their leisure, the design community can listen in with their computer, as depicted by Eric on the right. He's actually not a designer. He's an accountant for us, but he could pass as a designer. <laughs> he needs a shave, though. And certificates of participation are issued for anyone desiring. So very popular every month. We hold these, and I think you'll find them useful. If you missed one or have an interest, 24-7, they're available online on our website. Right now, we have over 40 to choose from. Not only do North Americans look at these, but we find people from around the world see them as valuable as well, as I guess you will too. Now, those webinars are largely generic in nature. Specific to Cleffy, however, are these series of videos, product education videos. Also on our YouTube channel, Bob delves into the details of the Cleffy products, in some cases tears them apart, talks about how they're built, what goes on on the inside, and how to apply them. On average, maybe five or six minutes in length. I think you'll find them helpful. You can take your, your phone out right now and access them within seconds. Before we get into products here in just a second to finish this presentation. As engineers, it's always helpful. By the way, I'm an engineer as well as many of my colleagues at Cleffy here in North America. We like to get onto job sites, into mechanical rooms, see plumbing jobs because that's the best way of learning. Shy of that, bringing those jobs to you is another way. And along those lines, three years ago, Cleffy developed Cleffy Excellence, whereby designers who have jobs that they're proud of that feature Cleffy products or perhaps have things about the job that are, are unique or problem solving in nature. They can online submit photos, talk about the job. Every month we receive entries. Kalepi chooses the top three design entries. And once a month during that webinar series, Coffee with Kalepi, as I mentioned, the winner is chosen by you. And it's pretty cool. It adds drama because the results are known instantly through the polling process. And the winner has the pride of knowing his colleagues chose him as the winning entry. He receives an iPad from Kalefi and a chance to win a trip to Italy with his or her guest. Over the course of three years, we have sent several people to Italy on our dime to see our factories and spend some quality time in Italy. Look at this for yourself. Perhaps you might even want to enter with a job you've been involved in. Okay, let's pause a second and jump over to the final leg of our presentation, and that is focusing on products that are considered by many to be some of Kalefi's more innovative. And I'll begin with balancing, static balancing valves, a very common product in the North America marketplace for quite some time. With the introduction years ago of dynamic balancing valves, which I'll address in just a few slides, they experienced a bit of a dip in popularity, but with the recent growth in variable speed circulators, including VFDs and ECM circulators, they have grown again in their use and in their applications. Whether variable or fixed orifice, they do require a pressure drop reading across the two ports to determine flow rate through the valve and allow the contractor to adjust the flow rate to the designer's specification. Here is a contractor doing such procedure on a Kalefi fixed orifice type balancing valve. A differential pressure gauge or manometer is used there is training and skill needed to calibrate and operate this equipment and set the flow rate accurately, whether fixed orifice, variable orifice, as being shown in this photo. By the way, variable orifice requires a little bit more effort because the flow coefficient of the space between the pressure port changes as one adjusts the valve. And resultingly, tools such as charts like this or calibration wheels like this are used in setting the flow rate. So regardless of variable 
or fixed because of what is involved in setting the flow rate, oftentimes you see something like this, where the contractor has placed the valve in the fully open position rather than risk not setting it correctly. And I think I would rather do that fully open or fully versus fully closed if I was a contractor not knowing as well. Kleppe solved that problem of static balancing valves by putting the gauge right on the valve itself, called quick setter. Here you see a photo of it. Flow would go up like the arrow shows here. When it comes time to set the flow rate on the circuit that the valve is placed in, the contractor pulls this pin. By doing so, some flow bypasses through this loop here by way of a internal venturi. As fluid goes up this center section here, inside of here is a magnetic disc attached to a spring. The disc rises up in the stream of the fluid and the magnetic disc attracts a ferrous bead on the outside of the valve itself. As it rises up, it indicates the gallons per minute going through the valve. So if the contractor, for example, wants four and a half gallons per minute, pulls the pin, let's say it it shows six gallons per minute, takes his wrench, adjusts the mechanism here to bring the flow from six down to four and a half, puts his memory indicator as shown here at four and a half, within seconds has set the flow rate versus having to worry about gauges. By the way, they all come with their own tailored insulation jacket, which is especially useful in chiller circuits to prevent condensation issues such as this application is on a chiller loop. More uses of quick setting balancing valves, a geothermal ground vault. The designer has decided to put these type of balancing valves on each of his ground loops, perhaps to make sure that, say, three gallons per minute is going through each of his ground couple loops here. Now, with the confidence that the contractor can set accurately flow using our balancing valves, you can see their reason for their popularity, such as you see on this job here. Now, Balancing isn't relegated only to hydronics, you'll agree. Hot water recirculation in a plumbing system is another popular application, especially these days where water is more scarce. So rather than let an opportunity for water when you turn on a hot tap for water to be wasted, waiting for the warm water to come, balancing valves are used, such as here. And the Quick Setter series called the Quick Setter Plus is ideal in doing that. Pull, adjust, and now in seconds, the plumbing engineer or designer has made sure that his risers is getting the proper flow of recirculation water. Here are some features of this line. They're available in one half, three quarter, and one inch connection. All lead-free certified. Temperature gauge is optional, although we find most designers like to order with the gauge because after all, that's what they're looking to control is the temperature on the riser going out to all of the sinks and showers and what have you. Built-in check valve, prevent any thermal siphoning and then a choice of either 0.5 to one and three quarter gallons per minute such as the scale used on this valve and two to seven gallons per minute. Dynamic balancing valves, great brands on the marketplace. Kalefi also makes dynamic balancing valves but we do something a little bit different. Our cartridges are polymer. They are silent unlike the metallic cartridges that are most common. They can experience a resonant frequency at certain operating conditions creating a hum and nuisance noise. So the dampening effects of polymers prevent that from happening. Otherwise, the cartridges work very similar to the metallic cartridges that have been around for some time. Kleppe makes the valve available in your typical wide type version, such as shown here, 121 series, built-in isolation valve and pressure ports, and then a compact version that has no pressure ports, no isolation valve, and in union connections. These are very, very common um, for not only hot water, but also some designers like to use them in hot water research because they are certified lead free as well. And they come in their, your choice of anywhere from a half gallon per minute constant flow rate up to 20 gallons per minute. So Kleppi's dynamic flow cal balancing valves as exampled here in this installation, hydronic heating insulation that is. And another hydronic application showing the compact version, three quarters of a gallon per minute, a half a gallon per minute, and a half a gallon per minute. We label all of these as they leave our facility here in Milwaukee where we assemble them. Innovative products continued on, thermostatic mixing valves. We produce a lot of them. Another line that we might be the biggest in the world. Here's a photograph that we used in a recent ad here in the United States showing our small, medium, and large mixing valves, both anti-scald 1070 rated as well as ASSE 1017. Our valves are considered very high quality. We use materials that are, are quite resistant to scaling. 
this contractor was nice to send a shot of himself in on a job. This is a hotel out west where he is assembling on job site a high low flow mixing station, which includes a high volume Kalefi mixing valve, a lower volume mixing valve, and a pressure reducing valve. And we were helping him with adjusting that, so he sent that photo in. Not all mixing valve, of course, are used plumbing systems. Hydronics is a very common application. Maybe 30% of our business is hydronic, such as this one. Always pump away on mixing valves rather than pump into the hot or cold return ports. Pump away, that keeps them nice and stable. In this case, a fixed temperature is being delivered to three zones controlled by the Kleppi zone valves down here. Moving on, hydronic system fill valves. Many on the market, all great brands. These all have in common one thing, a lever or handle that gets flipped over before the system is filled. That disables the pressure reducing qualities of the valve and allows the valve to basically pass straight through and flow as dictated by the internal resistance of the valve itself as well as the mains pressure and perhaps the back pressure of the system. The system starts to get filled up and hopefully before the pressure is reached or even the pressure relief valve on the system is exceeded, spilling water all over the floor, someone comes down, flips the valve back over into pressure reducing mode to finish the filling process. Now, Kleffi has taken that cumbersome task of having to babysit filling valves out of the equation with the autofill system fill valve as shown here. This contractor is presetting the valve before beginning to fill this system, taking a close look at the screwdriver or a penny or dime is used to set the pressure by which you want the system pressure set to. In this case, 15 PSI opens up the bottom. It goes into an immediate fast fill as if there's no pressure reduction is, is basically disabled. As pressure starts to build up towards that 15 PSI, the valve slows down and turns off automatically. Set it, fast fill it, forget it. Very popular valve, both in residential and commercial sizes from Kalefi. Dirt elimination, moving over to debris. We don't like debris, why? Because it causes heat transfer problems and reduces the life of various products in the system, especially your more high-performing products such as condensing boilers, chillers, heat pumps, and circulators, to name a few. Here is a system that has a dirt separator called a low-flow zone dirt separator. They're very effective at taking out down to very small 5 micron type particles out of a system. They basically scrub the system of a debris. Where is it? Right here. That's a Kleffi version. There's also Taco and Spirotherm that make this type of product in the marketplace, and they are all very effective. However, one issue all manufacturers have faced over the years is a type of debris called iron oxide or ferrous oxide. It's the result of oxygen reacting with any steel or iron in the system, such as a radiator, or even the pipe itself to create iron oxide, sometimes known as magnetite or hematite, depending on the form it takes within the system. More on that in just a second, but it's especially hard to eliminate because it's so small, oftentimes microscopic. So the result could be that debris can settle in places in the system, build up, and create failures such as this cast iron boiler that ended up leaking. Here we can see after the contract basically replaced it, debris falling out, and from the red we can see some ferrous oxide, and we also can see some calcium or magnesium carbonate that has fallen off as well. So oftentimes not homogenous debris is found inside systems that fail. Here's another example on a condensing boiler. This is a fire tube boiler which has succumbed to ferrous oxide buildup. Here is a shot from uh, a contractor who had problems with a system that had oxygen ingress and resultingly corrosion, hematite, magnetite. Magnetite is the more common, kind of the, as contractors will say, the black ink that they see oftentimes. Now, no worries with pouring this into the earth. Magnetite is a naturally occurring substance in the earth. As an example of magnetite, you might remember from science days is something called lodestone. It's basically a magnetized magnetite where the compasses were made out of lodestone. Other problems, worn O-rings or even mechanical face seals on pumps, clogged pipes, and circulators, especially ECM type circulators because they employ very powerful magnets in their rotors. And the same powerful magnets that deliver high efficiency in a pump also deliver the magnetism that attracts iron oxide as you can see, being built up here. Now, we were on this job site uh, with, with these stalled circulators, and fortunately, our manager was able to clean them up, 
get them working again, you can see how abrasive they can be by the scoring on the end of this very hard shaft on this ECM circulator. How is magnetite formed? I mentioned a little bit the oxidation, so take a black pipe, one inch diameter in this example. If it's exposed to oxygen, debris starts to build up, flake, flake off oftentimes microscopic. It floats around, it floats around, driven by the circulator. As the circulator turns off, it settles to the bottom somewhere in the system. The circulator kicks back on, floats around. Over time though, much like flour on a counter, left there long enough, being able to be blown off with your breath will cake up and will become somewhat solid. Somewhat similar phenomena happens in a system where the magnetite can start caking up, such as was in this section of a boiler that cracked as a result of magnetite caking up. So to address that issue, Cleffy developed the magnetic dirt separator. You can see these dirt separators, whether they're small for residential or light commercial or large for the bigger commercial jobs, they all have in common a magnetic force that is in place inside of the system, either by way of an external band with the brass and polymer or an internal bayonet, if you will, that extends up into the system. So if we were to take this guy apart and see what's going on in the inside, it would look like this. The debris comes in, the yellow indicates the flux lines of the magnetic field. Let's take those flux lines away and see what's going on. So the magnetic stack, if you will, of rare earth magnets, same technology used by the pump guys, we employ to attract ferrous oxide. Debris comes in, the debris that's not ferrous slows down, gets deflected by the mesh, drops into the bottom here, and debris that is magnetic and in the past problematic that would have a chance to pass through and find its way into the system that it shouldn't find its way into great problems the magnets attract it to the brass sleeve only for the contractor then to eventually drain down as you see here. He can pull the bayonet out. It's a dry well by the way. The All the debris drops to the bottom and then the purge valve can be opened here. This shows it cracked here. This is basically by design because if the separator was placed close to the floor, you'd run into interference with the floor when trying to pull the bayonet down. So we have really, I think uh, our engineers did a clever job of taking advantage of the attraction between the north side and the south side of these magnets so that you can put a bending moment on them and basically articulate them like this and give you that clearance. Very, very clever. By the way, that's a spacer, that's a magnet, that's a spacer, that's a magnet. That gives us the optimum magnetic field that is created in the separator. Now, how strong are these? If we took this guy with only two magnets and tried to pick up a 10 pound barbell weight, it would look something like this, like Cody did recently in our office. Pretty impressive. You can just imagine how well they do on getting rid of magnetite in a system. A real job, a 12-year-old system that had a cast iron boiler, problems incurred, the boiler was changed out, upgraded to a, a high efficiency condensing boiler, problems continued on with the system. The contractor heard about Kalepi's magnetic dirt separator, used it as a tool to basically clean up the job. As it worked, the magnetite was caught and over few weeks, the contractor was able to clean up the system and now is running nicely. Here is his third iteration. This was down in Kenosha, Wisconsin. And you can see when he blew down all of the magnetite that was captured rather than be allowed to create a problem in the system. Another shout out in New York recently submitted to us. These are five different boilers, five different systems, but all in one mechanical room, all being protected by a Kalefi magnetic dirt separator. This technology is very well proven. In the brass variety, we have had these in place place for seven years now as shown here on this system up in Manitoba. Moving on, air elimination. We mentioned magnetite formed by oxygen, right? So it's important for many reasons for air not to enter into a system or if it does to automatically rid itself. Kalefi does a lot of air separators. We also do a lot of testing, both of Kalefi and of competitors. Here's a Kalefi unit where we're measuring the efficiency. And if truth be known, all coalescing air separators on the market in terms of air elimination are very efficient, way above 99% efficiency, whether it's Kalefi or Spirotherm or Taco, and we've done a lot of benchmarking. What's I think important to point out is some of the other details involved with construction. As we look at a coalescing type of air separator, in this case, Kalefi, we have a coalescing mesh where microbubbles that were created by either heating the water 
or in, incurring a pressure drop, lowering the solubility of the of air, bringing it out of solution. As those micro bubbles collect and collide and become bigger bubbles, they eventually float to the surface, and the air cushion up here starts to increase. The water level drops, the float drops with it, and connected to the float is a linkage that pulls down this little needle valve. Now, a couple of things that are very attention to detail related, stainless steel linkages rather than plated steel that some makes have, so non-corroding. A float that is pinned, we don't allow any chance for the float to come in contact with the ID of the cylinder it rides within. It doesn't take much frictional force to hang up floats. We don't give it a chance, so the, a nice unique feature of Cleffy, and very precision ground needle valves because right through these O-rings that the needle valve is sealing up against, is all the air goes automatically in the system, whether it's a small air vent or a 12-inch pipe diameter air separator from Calefity. All the air ends up going through a needle valve through an O-ring such as this. So attention to detail is very important and I think differentiates ourselves from many players in the coalescing market, if not all players. Here's a contractor wrenching in up in Montana, a Calefi air separator. We try to get to the jobs as much as we can to see contractors using our products. Here's a Calefi air separator. Here is another automatic air separator from Calefi, this time with the tag indicating ASME and Canadian registration number certification. From about four inch and down, all of our separators are made available both tagged and non-tagged. The cost of the non-tagged units to produce, of course, lower and therefore price to market is a little bit of a discount. Now, in this job from Dennis Supply, the contractor elected to include also in series a magnetic dirt separator. Nice job. Here's another similar job, air separator and dirt separator in series. Now, you might ask yourself, can these be combined into one unit? And the answer is, well, yes. After those contractors had installed those previous two jobs I just showed, Cleffy introduced the disc of dirt mag in 2015. The upper portion of the two-in-one device has the same efficiency as a dedicated air separator and the same efficiency in the bottom portion as a dedicated dirt separator. Here's an example of one in installation sent from Saskatoon. Before the installation got placed down, they took a photograph of it because the magnetic part couldn't be seen down here. After insulating it, they crawled underneath and took a nice photograph of the magnetic bayonet going up into the separator. We've been making combination air and dirt separators without magnetic features for 15 years now in North America. It's just some photographs taken around the country. A oh boy, they're a chiller over here. Hydraulic separation. What is hydraulic separation? Well, it is basically a way of saying preventing pump conflict. And what is pump conflict? It's when one pump turns on and it creates a back pressure against another pump in the system somewhere. So if we look at this job, if these four pumps over here were on and this one was off, and if this one turned on, by having hydraulic separation, it doesn't allow any back pressure to take place against any of these other pumps. If it were allowed to, it would reduce the flow rate in the circuits those pumps are driving. They would be coupled. We want to decouple them. In fact, designers sometimes will refer to devices for hydraulic separation as decouplers. Now this job uses one form of decoupling that's been around for a long time, and that's taking two T's, spacing them closely together, a very effective form of creating hydraulic separation or primary secondary, if you will. It's important to follow this rule of thumb, though. If your supply return header over here on the secondary diameter of the pipe is D, your center-to-center -center spacings and your primary connections need to be less than 4D. 3D is okay, 2D, the smaller the better. But once you get above 4D, for instance, if the contractor, rather than placing the pipe here, placed it here, now those pumps would see each other and begin back pressuring against one another. If they're ECM pumps, it's going to cause them just to work a little harder to maintain delta P or delta T, however they're being controlled. And if they're fixed speed or single speed, it would reduce the flow rate and they would be fighting one another. And that's what you want to pre prevent, thus the popularity of hydraulic separation. Now that's one method, closely spaced D's. Recall this photograph from earlier. Here's your closely spaced D's and another job from Quebec still being fabricated of a primary loop, primary part to the boiler, and then a secondary. And here are your two T's connected together, closely spaced T's. Thanks, guys, for the photograph on that. Method number two, a buffer tank. Here's a buffer tank. On this job, it has multiple heat sources, a boiler and a heat pump over here. It is creating hydraulic separation. 
secondary is separated from the primary over here. The Cleffy buffer tank has multiple ports allowing multiple heat generators to be connected to it. These pumps don't see each other and the pumps driving the boiler and the pump driving the heat pump don't even know one another exists. Okay, now why a buffer tank rather than closely spaced T's? Well, this system is highly zoned. There are some zones, heating zones, that have a load very small in relationship to the capacity of the boiler, the smallest turn down capacity of the boiler or the heat pump. So by having a buffer or thermal flywheel, if you will, in addition to hydraulic separation, too frequent of contacts of the contactor driving the compressor in the heat pump and also too frequent of on and off actuations of the boiler, uh, they're averted and therefore making the system more reliable and efficient. And the third most quickly growing method and perhaps now the most common method of hydraulic separation is using what's called a hydraulic separator or a hydro separator for short. Here's a hydraulic separator. Here's six boilers over here. Uh, these are condensing boilers. Each of the pumps on each of these boilers now do not see each other. These take circulators over here don't see each other. These circulators don't see each other. They don't see each other. Now they operate efficiently. Same here on this job, courtesy of Lars, sent to us, I believe, in New York of some large condensing boilers. This one, a little tongue-in-cheek, was taken from a professional NFL football team up in northern Wisconsin that we can't name, but to give you an idea, their star quarterback is Aaron. <laughs> now what's going on inside of a hydraulic separator? You can see here, peeled away, nothing moving. We do have a baffle plate. The baffle plate serves the purpose of making flow that could otherwise be turbulent. Turbulence means pressure drop. We don't want pressure drop. We want minimum pressure changes into laminar or minimize pressure drop. And also the baffle plate has been perforated with sharp edges, giving it a coalescing feature. So in addition to hydraulic separation, it also gets rid of air. Thus, all of our hydraulic separators come with a standard high capacity air vent up here. And debris catches in the bottom, although it's not facilitated with any type of mesh. So the principal function of a hydraulic separator from Cleffy is hydraulic separation or primary secondary. And secondary functions are air and dirt removal. Been used for a long time. Many designers will not even include an air separator because they'll rely on the air elimination performance of the Cleffy hydraulic separator. Now a question you might ask is, well, can I get rid of my air separator? Well, it depends on the job and perhaps the source of air coming into the system and how quickly you want to get rid of it. However, to ensure the same capacity of air separation and dirt separation you would find in dedicated components, Cleppy designed a sister line called HydroCal, which has all three functions built in one. We got rid of the baffle plate and replaced it with a specially designed mesh that allows for hydraulic separation, coalescing air separation, and dirt separation, all done high efficiently. So its primary functions are all, are all three available from 2 to 12 inch. Here's an example of why they're so popular. An air separator dedicated here, 4 inch list price is $4,500 from Calefi. That function is in the HydroCal. Hydraulic separation, dirt separation, purchased individually, list priced around 13,000 and change. By comparison, the HydroCal a little over half. This is a job that could have benefited from a HydroCal. Before this excellent contractor knew of the HydroCal, or even Cleffy for that matter, they constructed this system and they have let us use the photo for illustration purposes. If they had considered using a HydroCal, they could have eliminated the T's, closely spaced T's in the crossover connector, considered eliminating the three Y strainers going down to each of the condensing boilers, and eliminated the air separator. In doing so, simplifying the piping quite a bit, such as this job from Colorado as well. You can see the hydrocal in the middle of the photograph. Many, if we have one, we have hundreds of jobs to show you, but just to give you an idea, this is down in southern Texas. Now I mentioned this product is available in connection sizes of 2 inch through 12 inch, but what about 2 inches and below? 2 inches is a very common light commercial flow rate, right? Cleffy introduced another product called the SEP4 for two inch and below applications. This very well designed job installed before the SEP4 was even available does illustrate the SEP4's benefits. So let's take a look at what a SEP4 looks like. 
And here is a cross section. Like its big brother, the hydrocal, it has air separation and dirt separation and hydraulic separation with the same efficiency as dedicated components. And it has a fourth function added, magnetic separation, thus the name SEP4. So this job's piping could have been simplified and magnetic separation included as well. Here is the product photo. By the way, notice the press connections recently introduced in 2016. And let's take a look at one installed, which looks like this. Doesn't quite look the same because it has its Kalefi furnished insulation jacket added on all Kalefi SEP4s as well as hydraulic separators with union connections up two inch and below. Insulation jackets are standard. Lots of separators produced by Kalefi going out the door one day. You can see here in the Milwaukee warehouse some of the separator products. A couple more products and we'll wrap it up. Air vents, they're worth noting. Kalefi is, like I mentioned, maybe the biggest in the world in air vents production. High capacity, lesser capacity, they're used. Many contractors will use them everywhere. At the top of boilers, as mentioned, we have it standard at top of our hydraulic separator. And on these secondary pumps going up, if this is a uh, multi-story building, at the top of those risers, perhaps there is also automatic air vents. It's important to know whether Clefi or Spirotherm or Taco or Bellingasset, there's a couple of key specs to keep in mind, and that is the operating pressure rating of the vent, or called sometimes venting pressure, maximum venting pressure. It might be 60 PSI, 90 PSI, 30 PSI, depend on the make and also on the model. What is the venting pressure? Well, it's if it's exceeded, it can prevent the air vent from working, in which case the force W created from the weight of the float more than offset by the force P caused by the internal pressure of the system. So for instance, as an example, if you're, you have a 10-story building and down in the lower level mechanical room, perhaps you might want to specify 50 PSI be placed at the boiler and uh, an air vent is located down there that's rated 40 PSI, regardless of how much air collects in the bottom of the air vent, it will not work. The float would hang up with its weight not able to offset uh, the force caused from the internal pressure. The other key spec, discharge capacity. And that basically as a, a function of a certain pressure, let's say 60 PSI, the air vent is able to expel so much in terms of cubic feet per minute. And they're all rated differently. And obviously the bigger valves are more highly rated. Zone valves, Kalefi makes a lot of them, approaching a couple of million sold in North America to date largely because of the reliability of the valve. I could talk for an hour about the different things we do on reliability, but here's an example. Each one of our coil springs is calibrated to the precise torque needed to deliver the close-off pressure that the valve is rated for. For example, 75 PSI or 50 PSI. But what I wanted to point out are fittings. Unique in the United States, at least as of now, Kalefi has union type compression or press fittings with leak detection capabilities. This is a cross section of this piece right here showing these little notches. If the contractor leaves the job and forgets about maybe a connection point being compressed when the system is filled, leaking will take place. I'll show that in another slide. They're great for when you're tired of replacing some valves actuator and decide to go ahead and just replace the valve itself, cut it out and simply replace it with a Clefi valve and within minutes, as Bob is showing here, press it on and now you have a highly reliable valve in place. Several of them here in this photograph before the actuators are placed on, you can see the press fittings and after the actuators have been installed. Okay, last slide and a great one to summarize some of our innovative products using this hydronic heating system photograph. Specifically, this is a secondary side of a heating system. So let's walk around at some of the key components. Down here in purple, Kalefi's Autofill automatically fast fills the system and turns off automatically at the desired pressure. Set it and forget it, no babysitting. Over here in red, off to the left, Kalefi's Zone Valves, highly reliable, going on a couple of million sold in North America to date. Controlling those zone valves and controlling these secondary circulators, by the way, are over here in green, Kalefi's line of zone relay controls. We didn't speak about that today, but if you have an interest in these products, please contact your Kalefi rep. Very successful product in the marketplace. 
Up here top right, Kalepi's line of coalescing air separators. Not only are they very efficient at ridding a system of any air, but also are extremely reliable because of the high quality components. Down here, going back to the boiler, Kalepi's dirt separator, and in this case, a magnetic dirt separator that is especially adept at taking out that tricky debris called iron oxide. Over here off to the right, we see a Thermacon tank. This contractor has used this tank to not only provide hydraulic separation, so these pumps don't fight with one another, as well as the perhaps the pumps on the primary side of the system, but the Thermocon provides a thermal flywheel to prevent short cycling of the boiler in the event that any of these zones are with a small heat load. If there was no zones with small heat loads, perhaps the contractor would have selected from the many types of Kalepi hydraulic separators available to him. I want to thank you for your attention, interest in Kalefi. If you have questions or want to learn more, contact your rep and we can come back in and speak more specifically on any of these items or any of the items that Kalefi produces.